You guys, I am so excited. Okay, got the best news ever. Yesterday, Calvin called me, and the crew over at Pacific Coast Metalcraft came through again, and I had my center console ready. I wasn't expecting it until like at least next week. So, as a very impatient person, you can understand how happy this made me. Look at this thing, it's just beautiful. And I got them to add this little gas port over here. Check this out. So that the tube to fill the gas tank is gonna come up here in its own little separate compartment so it's away from the electrical and stuff in there. It was like, eh, electricity, gas, tubes, obviously that's gonna be all sealed and clamped, but I thought it's probably safer just to have it in its own little thing. So they welded that on there for me. Now I just gotta cut some holes, put some plastic access hatches in. The batteries are gonna go on the bottom and then the electrical fuses and and wiring and all that sort of stuff is going to be up on a shelf here and then controls right here. <laughs> Let's put it in. Time to get this gas port installed. So that's gonna go right there. But I need to access this coupler here to be able to tighten the hose clamps on there and loosen them off if I ever need to remove them. So I gotta put an access panel right here. It's this little four inch waterproof access panel. So I've traced out the circle here. And I'm just trying to, I don't have a hole saw that big. It's four and a half inches. Uh, I think I'm going to just drill a hole and try and jigsaw as much as I can and then saws all this part that's too close for the jigsaw. So. Hey guys, just a heads up for those of you out there who are interested in learning Kamiko. Neil Paskin is going to be teaching a course in June with the Makers Mob, showing you everything from material preparation, building your own jigs, and cutting and assembling the Kamiko patterns. If you want more information on the course, Click the link in the description box below because registration ends June 13th. Right, so with the access panel installed, we can now stand it up next to these fuel lines here, and we're going to cut them to length. Okay, so before we drop this in, we got a sickle flex around the opening, and we got to get our hose clamps on here. 
So with fuel lines or with most fluid lines, you uh, double clamp everything, right? So you got a safety mechanism. So I got one on there. I'm just going to slide the other one on, but I don't want it to drop down because I don't have a, once I bolt this thing down, anything that falls down in there is going to be pretty hard to retrieve without unbolting the whole. So I'm just tightening by hand these hose clamps so that they're not going to slide around. Okay, looks like the tubes are all the way up there. So now I just gotta get a wrench in there to tighten those hose clamps. Then we can bolt down the console. So I was hoping to put both battery boxes down below, but with these uh, big bulky lids that go on them, uh, there just wasn't enough room to fit them both down below, but this upper compartment's plenty big for the battery plus uh, the fuse and electrical panel and that sort of stuff to fit in there. So one down below, one up top, and I'm just gonna drill some holes through this plywood shelf I put in here uh, so that I can run some battery leads directly up and in through these little access ports. Then I've got a little template and I'm gonna lay out where my switch panel goes and then I think I'm going to put the ignition over here, throttle here, steering wheel and then the gauge somewhere up top. So let's finish get this console all roughed in. So as I was putting all this console stuff together, I realized, yeah, we're on a lake. I'm not going to be going out in crazy rough water, but there's really no handholds anywhere on this boat. I don't have any rails. I don't have any seats or framework to grab onto, really. Um, and especially at the center console, you know, other than the steering wheel, you know, if somebody's standing beside me or or whatever and the boat rocks you got to have something to grab onto and there's there's nothing here right so i picked up these stainless rails you know it would have been nice to just have calvin weld these handles on there but you know he threw this together so quick for me that i'm not gonna keep going back there and hassling him and taking up his time so um i'm just gonna use these stainless ones that i bought at the store so that way, you know, somebody standing here, if the boat's going to give a rock, you got something to grab onto before you go overboard. All right, so I'm switching out these little small washers for like a nice big one on the inside. And I might actually even stack the small one on top of there as well, just to spread the weight out and then the nut. So that should give it plenty of strength. And then I'm going to put my good friend Sikaflex here just around the base. So I don't want any water getting in. Oh, now we're just making a mess.
The Sikaflex also acts kind of like a rubber gasket preventing uh, the galvanic corrosion between the aluminum and the stainless, right? Because the stainless is a nobler metal than the aluminum, so it, it eats away at the aluminum if it gets wet. So having the Sikaflex in there kind of creates like a gasket that prevents most of the contact and will only have minimal corrosion that way. And I'll spare you the glory of me reaching in here and putting these nuts on. It'll just be a lot of swearing. So I was kind of, you know, apprehensive about punching too many holes in the center console because you obviously don't want water getting in. But, you know, I've used Sikaflex on all the holes and there's gaskets on all the controls. And I'm going to get a canvas cover made for this so it's not just getting hammered on rainy days. But then I also realized it's going to get hot inside here, right? When it's a hot summer day and then when the sun goes down, it's going to get cool. And you get wherever you get hot and cold, hot and cold, you get condensation, right? Especially on the inside of the aluminum, it's going to want to sweat uh, and have lots of condensation buildup. So I need to drill kind of the last thing, I, last major hole other than the steering wheel is I need to drill out a vent hole so this, this console can breathe, right? And the hot air inside here can rise up and come out the side so I'm just going to punch a vent in here and if that doesn't do it I can always put another one on the other side oh, let's drill another hole all right so I went up to the property this last weekend oh, to meet the neighbors and uh, talked with them a fair bit asked them as many questions as I could think of and they actually had a 23 foot skiff similar to this that they use they used to carry in all their materials with, um, but they also told me that they sunk it like three times and uh, that you need to have multiple bilge pumps, which some of you guys already mentioned in the comments. And now I'm seeing the utility in that, uh, despite having this buoyancy tank, not a ballast tank, I've been corrected by the comment, Karens. Um, it's a buoyancy tank in the back that would hopefully keep uh, the boat afloat even if it did fill up mostly with water uh, but I don't want to risk it so I purchased another this is an automatic built-in sensor uh, bilge pump so I'm just gonna I'm using a Y to connect it to the same uh, outlet skin fitting so I'm just cutting in this little Y here so that it'll just go out through the the other build, the main bilge line here, so I don't have to put multi more holes in my hull. Okay, there we go. Two different bilge pumps with two different sensing switch systems on two different batteries. Hopefully that'll keep the boat safe from sinking. And well, brethren, that concludes this week's video. Please bow your heads as we thank the good Lord for making us able to do awesome shit. Be sure to join me next week as I will be preaching, I mean teaching, I mean doing some more awesome stuff, hopefully getting this boat in the water. Till then, hallelujah, Samurai.